Hello guys and welcome in this new video in the NTD component system series. Now in the previous video we talked about um, rigid body and um, I don't remember transform component. So the idea was to create uh, this hybrid NTD component system that you can actually build into your game to manage your object easily. So yeah, instead of using like the object oriented architecture or paradigm or whatever you call it, you can simply go out and use the entity component system which is more uh, you know powerful than, than, than the object oriented because it gives you more flexibility and uh, it also more efficient in terms of memory usage and cache and things like that but the version we're using in this video or we're building in this video is more like a hybrid entity component system which means it is not a pure entity component system and uh, that actually means it's not as powerful as we might expect it to be. But the idea was just to kind of showcase a better way of dealing with game object. This is still better than object oriented because somehow the, the entities are, you know, stuck together in the memory, although the component are just kind of, you know, stored around in the memory, but this is somehow better than the normal way. So in this video, we're going to be creating the box collider to handle collision as you can see right here so yeah that's what we're gonna be doing so let's get started now I won't be writing code in this video I'm just gonna explain and you could simply pause the video and write the code because there is not a lot of code to write and that's also one thing I really appreciate about um, ECS is the fact that once you got the the core the base of your of your engine of your ECS engine in place it becomes really easy to create all kind of things you just have to create a component and just add it to an object and the rest will be dealt by the computer itself so that's something I really like about entity component system now the first thing I'm gonna invite you to do uh, is to create a class so in my case here I created a folder called collision you can simply go out and create it like you want it doesn't matter so this is just the way i want to organize my code and as you can see here this is the class definition there is only two method in that class so just don't want to get too theoretical about it but i think you already know and if you're building a game at least you know about a collision detection and there are many ways of handling collision um, in the game dev but one of the simplest ways is um, to simply have like box around your object and you will simply check if the box overlaps on top of each other and then you will know ah, there is a collision and that's basically what we're doing in this in this in this ECS component system that we're creating we simply check two rectangles and see if one is on top of the other and we can know yeah this object is colliding with that other object and it's all about comparison so the x position should be you know smaller or bigger than according to whatever you want to check so this is basically the idea of this i don't want to get too theoretical i will provide this link in the description below so that you guys can go and read if you don't know this kind of you know collision stuff so the standard way of calling it is just aabb and uh, the first function right here is it's taking two parameters, two SDL rectangles. It's taking a reference. You could have take it by value, you know, but I want to take them by reference because I don't want to copy the object before handling them. I just want to take the reference of an object and check from that. And the second one is still the same. It's just an overload of that same method. But this time it's taking the component box collider. We're coming to that in a couple of seconds. You can see it has these two components and in the CPP file we simply return the check you can see right here we check if the position of the first rectangle plus the width you see is bigger than the position of the X of the second one and so we can check if they are overlapping on top of each other and we simply return the value of this of this uh, uh, comparison right here if it, if it ret returns true that means we have like a collision and this one right here we seem to take the box collider component and call the function above and the job will be done so that's all about this class now there is more you can add if you want to but i think so far we got everything we need basically 
The next step is then to show you how I created the component, the box collider component. And as you can see here, I have this file which I create inside of my folder component. I call it box collider 2D because this is simply a two dimensional uh, collision detection. So um, just want to make sure it has some important component. The first one is going to be the box, which is nothing but the SDL rectangle. So this is the box which you know which is around the object and you can see it right here i have the box uh, around objects which actually uh, which in this case is our box collider and uh, we also have this variable here uh, which is the collision tag this will be necessary um, in the future if you want to have an object with a specific tag like enemy or wall or whatever tree or you know boss because um, according to the tag a box collider has, you can you might want to apply different damage to the player, for example. That's why we need a tag. But you don't have to use a string for that. I, I don't even think it's a good idea to use strings. I, I often want to avoid string as possible in terms of, you know, uh, calculation and things that has to involve with with a loop. I don't like to use strings for that, but it, it doesn't cause any problem. It, it still works. But one way you can actually make this better is using is by using enumeration where you can simply define your constant like enemy, wall, boss. You know, you have like a global wrapper for a group of objects, which can be referenced as a number and you will come here and simply create a tag as being that one of the value of that enum plus and you can simply pass that value and get a good result. So that's what I would recommend. I haven't done it because I didn't want to, so whatever, but yeah. So, and we have a transform, you know, the object that will take this collision component needs to have a transform component. Basically in Unity, for example, the Unity actually has like a hybrid um, entity component system like this, not exactly like this, but something this way so um they, they they actually have this thing which is quite fixed by all entities when you create a new entities it always have a transform component because the transform component it's it, it's actually what defines where the object will be located the size of the up the scale so to say and the rotation that's why you basically want to get access to the transform of the entity to which this collider, this box collider will belong to. Now, this is uh, actually because I want to draw that on the screen. That's why I need like a target renderer, which I'm going to be getting from the engine class, which has everything about the windows and the renderer and so go on. So these are the, the member variables. You can see I have different constructor. Um, we need to have the target renderer if you want to render this. I, you know this is not actually something you have to do you could have simply create a function aside this which uh, which simply uh, gave you access to actually tell if you want to draw the box collider or not so I didn't want to think so much so I just kind of give this as parameter to the function to the constructor and uh, yeah as you can see and I simply initialize it here the rest is about the width and the height of the box collider now one thing I also wanted to kind of figure out was um, if I have like a, an entity which already already has like a sprite I want to be able to actually define my box collider based on the sprite size so that I don't have to pass the width and the height of the box collider while constructing it but just doing it by accessing the sprite sprite component of an entity so that, that, that that's actually one way you can do that but whatever so we have a second constructor which takes like the tag as the third component so there's nothing new about that you need to have a destructor to make sure you you always destroy all these things so uh, bool init and we implement the init function transform entity we get the transform component because we need that to actually update the position of the box collider this is where we draw it simply draw a rectangle using SDL it's nothing special about that and uh, the update function simply make sure we always update the X and the Y position of 
our box collider and the way we do that is by just getting the position of the transform of the entity and the, the rest is just dealt you know when this is called now you can see right here we also want to get the collision chart to make sure we can check some uh, if a collision happened between two specific objects and things like that that's basically our our uh, box collider class and uh, now the way we use this I simply switch over to my engine and there we create our entities and you already know how to add a box collider you simply say add component box collider I put my renderer because I want to render it um, sprite uh, get with you can see right here since this um, I added a sprite to this component to this entity player right here and you, if you remember the add component returns the component that we add to the object it actually returns a reference or like a pointer to that object so I can actually use that to get the size of the sprite and turn it into the box collider size so if you remember I said you could actually do this inside you could check okay does this entity has like a sprite then we want to simply go out and use the size of that sprite as you know as the width and the height without having to pass the parameter by the constructor that's something you could do so um yeah the ui level so that's not in point so we simply add and now in my update function so the manager will draw the component since it is inside the, the manager uh, component list and down here I can simply go out and call my collision and I want to check for example the collision between the player so the box collider of the player that's why I get the box collider of the player and I also have the entity one which is up here so I also want to get the box collider and pass both collider to my ABB to my AABB function so you could check if there is a overlapping between uh, uh, both uh, box colliders so now if it happens if there is a collision between those two components I want to set the color of this UI label to red and uh, I also want to move the player you see I set the uh, inertial force of my rigid body to minus one two I change the direction of the movement and I also, uh, I also put this text, this text right here I also show that on the screen so if I run this you will see so this will hit this text will turn to red you see and it it's a little bit fast we can't see anything right now but yeah you can you get you get a point so that's basically how you can create a box collider uh, component so I hope you guys learned something from this video I'm planning to start a, another series about pure ECS I, I've been working on that and uh, it's coming soon the pure ECS is where we actually have everything separate we have our component stacked together in the memory so that we can easily access them because you know one of the major problem of this hybrid ECS right here is the fact that the caching the caching isn't optimal because when you ask the computer to actually get something from the memory the computer does not just get what you ask him to, to actually read he go out and simply grab a, a bunch of memory and put them in a cache so that he can access them later when you try to access something that was that was somehow near the variable you just access so and the fact that we can put all our component in the memory stack together means when we access a component the computer will grab a whole bunch of component that was nearby the component we just um, retrieved and later when we try to access those components the computer won't go back to the memory to try to access it will simply go to the cache and that will make our program even faster and that's actually the power of ECS and that's the reason why people are actually looking forward to you know implement this on their engine you understand why unity is working on that and you know I think this is gonna be the standard sometime but for now it's a little bit hard and it takes a lot of effort to actually implement it I mean it's really difficult you have to think everything from scratch there is not like a standard way of doing it and you have to be able to know what to do and when to do it and how to do it so that it doesn't actually 
bring more problems because one thing I have to say before I end this is if you don't implement your ACS well, this could turn uh, turn out this could be you know even bad for your for your game engine. So just think about it before moving forward with that. Sorry for holding you for so long and thank you for watching videos on Medical Channel. Hope you guys will keep watching my videos and subscribe if you haven't and uh, ciao.